So hello everyone, I hope you can all hear us well and um, I'm Greta, I'm Head of Marketing here at Adcash and um, I wanted to say thank you all for participating in our very first AdConf digital conference series. So we will be doing some different uh, conferences that um, we want to share with you over the upcoming months and we really, really hope this um, series will help you get some valuable insights and tricks how to stay in the in the game during these unprecedented times. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, the, here is the conference agenda. We're going to have um, three main speakers and um, after each um, each speech, we will have a Q&A session. So everyone, you can see in, in your Zoom meeting as well that you have an option to for Q&A. So once we oh, the speaker starts, then please feel free to ask any questions you have. We might not have time to answer to all of them, but um, if we don't ha have time to answer all of them, then we will take those questions offline as well. So please ask as many questions you have, and I'm sure our speakers will be very, very happy to, to present them. But um, first of all, well, I would like to introduce you to our CEO, uh, Brit Viru, who will be doing our little opening of the digital conference series that we're going to have. Thank you, Greta. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the first session of hopefully many future sessions in the AdConf online conference series organized by AdCash. Um, it is no secret by now that the current volatile times are affecting all of us directly or indirectly. And the next two to three years will be tough for everyone. Many companies and industries are, are already suffering losses. Similarly, we have uh, already seen opportunities arise, budgets reallocate and market shares being redistributed in the online advertising sector as well. Um, as we always strive to put our customers' interest sessions, to share the advice from industry experts with you to help you stay in the game and ahead of the competition. Uh, therefore, um, let's spend the next few hours together um, learning from Emmanuel, Evgeny and Arthur the tricks and tips of finding the opportunities in this fast-paced chaos. I hope you enjoyed today's webinar and find the idea or ideas that will help you grow your business further. Stay safe. So let's start with our first speaker, who is Emmanuel Sinka. I'm sure that those who are kind of um, old guys, old girls in the affiliate marketing industry, you all know him. He's been around for many years and he's been one of the speakers in many affiliate um, conferences, for example, Affiliate World Europe, Affiliate World Asia. And also he's the founder of um, Stacked Marketer, which is a daily news newsletter. And if you haven't subscribed to his newsletter, then I would really, really recommend because for me, it's the one of the newsletters that I've subscribed and I'm getting the five minute updates every day about our industry and what's what's going on. So I would highly recommend to for you guys to subscribe to it as well. But let's get started. Floor is yours, Emmanuel. Hey, uh, let me just share my screen to make sure everyone can see it properly. Uh, can you give me a thumbs up if my screen is uh, okay? To make sure that everyone can see it properly. Okay. So uh, thank you for the introduction, Crete. I'm also very happy to be here. Um, so as uh, based on your introduction, that you said that uh, I started Stacked Marketer as a newsletter for affiliates and marketers in general. Uh, what's been going on is that uh, I kind of get a lot of information about, from all sides and I try to keep up to date with uh, everything that's going on in the industry. So it, it, just, it just so happened that in this period, um, I kind of get more information than the average person. So uh, that's why I'm invited here to try to shed a little bit of light of uh, the things that I found out from, uh, from the industry. So um, without further ado, I will go right into it. So small introduction uh, uh, for people who don't know me, why I've been in the industry for over five years now. I've spoken at a few conferences, including Affiliate World uh, and um, uh, Afiliados Brazil, which was um, uh, which happened in the Sao Paulo. I used to be a moderator on the STM forum, and the main project that I have right now, and the one that I'm focusing exclusively on, is a Stack Marketer newsletter, which actually enabled me to, um, you know, to, 
to uh, create this presentation, which enabled me to be more aware than the average person of what's going on in our little industry. So if you don't know it, I would encourage you to check it out. If you don't like it, it's not a problem at all. Um, it's 100% free, just your email. And if you enjoy it, then I'm very happy. If you don't enjoy it, it's not a problem at all. Easily to, uh, you can easily unsubscribe. So what we will go through today is a uh, report that we've gathered uh, relatively recently. So it's gonna be very data heavy. Um, what I do wanna say that even though it's data heavy, I did try to kind of, um, you know, take out the main points that are most actionable for you. Uh, so we will go through how we gather the data. We will also look into how businesses were impacted overall. We will compare digital and physical products. We have a little bit of data on Facebook ads versus Google ads and more data on traffic will come later from uh, Evgeny, who is from AdCash. Then we look at impact by category and probably the most interesting things for most listeners will be the most negatively affected businesses and most positively affected. So like uh, Preet said at the beginning, there are a few businesses struggling, but there's also opportunities that uh, came to be because of this. So that's kind of uh, what I want to take you through. And of course, there will be a question and answer. At the very, um, so if there will be questions, I'm glad to answer, whether it's very strictly related to this presentation or if it's something you know that you just wanted to ask me at some point, uh, I'm glad to help out and I'm glad to answer. And even after the presentation, if there's enough time, you can reach out to me and uh, I'll do my best to answer. So um, with any sort of report, there's always the, the challenge of how you gather the data, how accurate is it? Even when it comes to the whole coronavirus pandemic, if you've read the news, which I'm sure most of you did, there will be a lot of things that have to do with how accurate is the data that governments take decisions on, right? It's, it's, it's a topic that, happened, that has uh, been going on more than, more than most of us would like. But we have a little bit of a similar challenge, right? Like how, um, how clean is the data that we get? So what we try to do is ask 10 questions in an anonymous survey. So we try to keep people as unbiased as possible. And we try to ask them to a broad range of marketers. So to affiliates, to e-commerce agencies or owners, to people who are you know, doing freelance consulting, as broad as possible. And we, we try to do this both through Stack Marketer, we asked our readers, but we also tried to ask several communities. Uh, I know uh, AdCash also shared uh, our survey to try to get as much information as possible. Uh, there were also two optional questions where it was more about getting extra comments. And in the end, we had uh, over 350 answers. And that's actually good enough to give us um, a good, uh, a reasonable direction for a few questions, but not to all. So don't expect us to be able to pinpoint, at least from this data, you know, like, which geo to target with what offer exactly, that's not going to work, but this is more of a broad trends and direction type of report. So the questions we asked were, it had to do with uh, the type of businesses that people had, it had to do with uh, the region they were running their product in, or like main region where they were promoting the product, uh, and how did they see their, um, their business change or like their advertising specifically change from you know before march and after march before march because that's uh what that was before a lot of countries went into lockdown before it was declared a global pandemic before you know it, the, the off button was switched on a lot of things that we're usually used to um so um yeah that's that's the main thing that we try to find out um starting off with how businesses were impacted overall I don't think it's a surprise for anyone that most of the businesses say that it was relatively negatively impacted. So there's a segment of around 20% that were neutral, but aside from that, mostly negative, very few found opportunities. And this might look scary at first, right? Because there's a lot of red here. You would think that everything is um, very, very negative. But if we look into it in more detail, and the first breakdown that we could do is looking at digital products versus physical products. Uh, if you think about it, even just uh, intuitively, a lot of things that had to do with retail, a lot of things that had to do with a certain supply chain, a lot of things that had to do with uh, China, especially even earlier on, was, uh, was more likely to struggle. So when breaking it down by physical product versus digital product, we see this very clearly. So there's much more, uh, uh, there's a much larger share of digital products that are either neutral, so they were not really affected or somewhat positively affected or better. 
fewer were negatively affected. So the very first lesson is that digital products are probably a little bit more pandemic resistant or easier to adjust. And we'll go into that a little bit uh, later as well. Looking at the return on ad spend, the story is pretty similar between physical products and digital products. So uh, when it comes to physical products, return on ad spend usually decreased. Um, we, we can only speculate what reason, but then when it comes to digital products, it was actually quite surprisingly stable. So this big chunk for me personally was a surprise that it was that stable. Uh, of course, there's still quite a few that decreased, um, but depending on what sort of uh, dig uh, digital products you're promoting, you will see that it can also be increasing in return and just being positively affected overall. One thing to mention about this question about the return on ad spend, though, is that you know a, a 10 to 25 percent decrease on ad spend if you increase your spend and you still are highly profitable is not necessarily a negative sign. So overall, um, take every little bit with um, try to create the whole context around any, any little bit of information here and put it together with what Evgeny and Arthur will talk about later on. When it comes to conversion rate changes, again, we see kind of a similar situation. The, the physical products usually not increasing in conversion rate. Probably depending on what verticals you're running into, it, it's just not something that's going to happen. And uh, surprisingly, at least for me, that around 15% reported that the conversion rate decreased by over 50%. So that's, that's a significant decrease in conversion rate. It just means people were much less interested in what they were selling. When it comes to digital products, almost half of them were stable though. So yes, there's uh, quite a bit of red, but there's an interesting chunk here of stable or even increase in conversion rate around 13%. Um, so, the as I mentioned, we have to put together the part where we talk about like how the return on ad spend change and then how also how much people spend, right? Because if they're increasing the spend, even with a slight decrease, um, they still are profitable. Unfortunately, for the most part, the signs point that it's not uh, it's not that direction. Um, mostly decrease, like over fifty percent decrease in uh, in their Spain in their spend for physical products. Well, for digital products, this is as neutral as it can be, I think. There's almost half of them actually saying that they had stable ad spend and then some increase, some decrease. But if you just look intuitively at the graph, it's, it's relatively equal and it's probably something you would expect uh, just about at any point in time, not only during the pandemic. So the first kind of a trend, which was probably obvious from uh, beforehand, is that digital products are much better. Um, and then I did want to look a little bit more into the breakdown of categories for physical products and splitting it by return on ad spend. So this is something that um, you can also take a screenshot of if you if you want to look at uh, later. But there's also going to be a link where you can see these um, old, all this data as well. But essentially, looking at the categories, we can kind of see what has actually increased in profitability for most people and what has truly decreased. Because if you look only without the category, you might say, like, don't sell any physical product. Um, and as I said, 353 answers means a little bit limited data, but there is a few things that we can look at. Even though it's only three answers, events and event planning obviously is always going to be completely dead during this period, unfortunately, unless they switch to virtual events, of course. But then usually you would consider it a physical product if people have to be physically in a location. Uh, then um, to my surprise, pets and kitchen appliances not doing so well. But for a few that had a reasonable amount of answers, it seems that there's some promise, right? Health being one of them, where more than half of uh, the responses were neutral or better. Then when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, education, neutral with only two answers, but electronics, a little bit of promise. Automotive, few answers, but people care about their cars, apparently. Um, notice that it's very difficult to find uh, digital uh, physical products, excuse me, that are doing well. So the only really outstanding one, I would say, is health that has a reasonable amount of answers and predominantly uh, positive. It's probably not a surprise, um, but don't fret. It's not only health that's doing uh, well. Remember, these are physical products only. So 
we did manage to get enough data to have a quick look at Facebook ads versus Google ads. Uh, when it comes to traffic, you'll get much more information from Evgeny, as I said before, but a uh, small thing that for advertisers that, you know, they like to compare these two traffic sources, uh, traffic did get cheaper recently because there's a lot more traffic because uh, with having people at home. And then we see with Facebook, it's been somewhat stable, but there's a few good segments that have said that price of traffic has a decrease for them. Then when we look at Google, there's a huge segment that says the price of traffic stayed the same, a few increased generally, um, aside from that generally tor towards cheaper traffic. So the main comment that I wanna uh, add here is that there's, um, there's a significant difference in terms of Facebook and Google when it comes to stability, it seems. When you ask people at any point in time, it does seem that Google is usually more stable than Facebook. And even during this pandemic, it seems to be, you know, it, it seems to be holding true. So Google is a little bit more uh, stable. If your main traffic type was, was Google, you probably have noticed this. And then if you are in a lot of Facebook groups, you will see that traffic is all over the place all the time. Same story, new data. That's, that's kind of what we have to deal with. Now, the more interesting part, I think, is the impact by category when it comes to all products, whether they're digital or physical. So this is where we can actually look into a few of the things that looked a little bit more promising. As I said, for physical products, it looked uh, quite bad. So just drawing a comparison, uh, educational, since it's mostly digital, now all of a sudden looks quite promising, right? Then if you look at entertainment services, quite promising as well. Um, games, few answers, but there's a little bit of, you know, common sense that gaming, something that's digital only, will be doing somewhat better when people are bored at home. Um, yeah, so overall, this is where we can start looking at things that are promising, right? So the least negative impacted so far are probably things related to adult entertainment. What can you do? Automotive, somewhat educational of course entertainment games insurance and a little bit of sweepstakes as well showed some promise both from the data and you know if you've reached out to your affiliate manager that has sweepstakes it's usually something that they will recommend um, of course it's not all um, you know rainbows and butterflies but it's generally a category that has been able to you know stick a little bit better during this period and things to avoid, I would say, of course, there's always a but because things change very quickly, but things to avoid for now, it seems fashion is not very, you know, it's not a priority right now. Of course, there's a few things that we don't know for sure with, uh, with this data, right? Fashion is outstandingly bad that have said have, you know, seven out of all these answers that have been negatively affected, significantly negatively affected by the pandemic have to do with fashion. And then what we could think about is that if you, this is coming a little bit from my experience, but in Romania, where I'm from, in Austria, and also, if I'm not wrong, in the United States, what's going on is that companies that have the ability to manufacture, um, you know, masks and other protective equipment for medical staff, they're essentially forced to do so. Of course, they get paid, and I, I don't know the details, but essentially, they switch from doing their regular fashion items to protective equipment for medical staff as much as it's needed. So there might be quite a few supply issues when it comes to fashion. Of course, fashion is not you know, the main thing that people think about when they are stuck at home, but it might be become more promising once things open up. Aside from that, travel and accommodation, we didn't get too many answers, but it's a common sense thing that it's not working uh, well so far. And then if you look, it's generally things that are a little bit, uh, have to do a little bit with you know luxury things that people want but don't necessarily need um, those are the things that are generally a little bit more negatively affected when it comes to physical products when it comes to digital products it's a little bit harder to see anything outstanding here events and event planning of course software as a service it really depends it's just one answer for each so for digital products i would even speculate that it's not necessarily a pandemic issue aside from events it could just be, you know, outliers because things go wrong regardless of whether there's a pandemic or not. Now, on to a little bit more of the good news, though. When it comes to positively affected businesses, health, um, 
there are some that have been very positively affected that do with health. And then again, nothing really outstanding when it comes to physical products. So you notice there's a little bit of a, of a contrast here. When it comes to negatively affected, we could choose uh, we could choose physical products. When it comes to negatively affected, we couldn't choose digital. It's the reverse here for physical, positively, probably health only. But when it comes to digital products, there's quite a few answers that uh, you know, give us some hope, at least for things that we could promote uh, in the coming weeks, months, maybe the whole year as affiliates. Insurance being one of them that uh, was a little bit of, uh, of an outlier, a positive outlier. And then, of course, there's not a huge outlier here only from the answers, but I do want to mention that for education and entertainment services, if you look at, so, you know, if you look at what sort of offers affiliate networks are actually promoting now, if you look at what, if you as a user browse uh, different websites, what sort of ads you get, it is going to be things that have to do with uh, digital entertainment, whether that's games, whether that's, you know, Netflix or alternatives to Netflix, those are doing pretty well. Health, of course, common sense, people care more about, you know, being prepared, staying healthy, boosting their immune system, things like that. Um, they probably will care about their, their financial well-being, so things that have to do with financial services should be doing okay in education. This is something that after the data, um, I do have a little bit of a better idea of how things are going. So what's going on with the pandemic is that things are opening up in some countries, but not in all, and they're opening up differently. So for example, in Romania, the school year is over. While in Austria, the school year will continue, so people will go physic uh, like it's over. Nobody will be able to go to school in, you know, this school year, not physically. While in Austria, it's not the case. So for education, if you have something super localized, that might be interesting. And for example, in Romania, they're even discussing that the next school year that starts in September will be digital only. So imagine that there's going to be around the world probably a million of kids and you know, young adults that will have some challenges when it comes to education. And if you have some affiliate offers that are suitable for them, it might be one of the more promising things to promote uh, in the upcoming months, maybe even a year, depending on how long this lasts. So as, a, as an overall overview, and probably if you don't care about the numbers specifically, and you just want a few recommendations that are backed by some trends, some data, and you can also uh, keep in mind, like, you know, take more data from where you, uh, where you can. What you should avoid is probably like fashion, travel and accommodation, events, apparel and jewelry, which is things that have to do with people really, you know, wanting them, not so much needing them. Uh, pets, I was surprised I would have expected pets to be something interesting, like people to want to take care of them. There's mixed signals for this overall, but what I can imagine is people do buy things for pets, but they buy them at the local grocery store for now. At least they don't, you know, do online shopping as much uh, when it comes to things that they can get easily there. I don't know for sure. I'm just speculating now. When it comes to positive though, this is probably the more interesting because you can just focus on what things that are working now. Uh, health related, if you have no supply issues, physical health products also will work. Um, of course, have to be adjusted a little bit for, for the current time. And then Gaming and casino, although it wasn't an outlier in the data, because I assume most of the people weren't, uh, you know, weren't running gambling and casino so much now, has been something that we've heard a lot of the time that is improving a lot, but not sports betting. So sports, sporting events are mostly out of, um, they're, they're not happening right now. So gambling and casino, and if, depending on, you know, what sort of audiences you can reach, Esports betting, so betting on uh, esports competition is, I wouldn't say just starting because it's something that people have been discussing for a long time that it should take off, but it's something that um, has been significantly accelerated by the, by the pandemic. So it's something that will probably also remain, maybe not as big as now, uh, but definitely bigger than it was before. Uh, so it's something that if you can if you can find the right audience, the right angles, it might be a, a interesting niche to be in. Then insurance, people are more aware that things could be, you know, things could be going bad. There's higher risk. People want to be as want to feel as safe as they can. Education, 
Um, this has always been interesting, but of course, even more so when people are stuck at home, maybe when people are out of a job, unfortunately, they will be trying to use that time to learn more, become better, and essentially get back into the workforce and start earning money as soon as possible. And then on the other side, they also still want to be entertained. Uh, they want to play games. A funny story here is that, you know, you would think that games are for kids or for very young people. The reality is that you see more and more older people that actually, you know, they get bored at home, they install a game or they, one example is like my dad installed Facebook as now he's like a Facebook addict, but he thought Facebook is stupid before. So things change and people change their habits. One thing to look into is how people change their habits uh, probably over time. And sweepstakes has always been one that depending on the angle that you have, depending on how good uh, the advertiser is at um, monetizing the leads, sweepstakes is always somewhat, um, somewhat of, a, of a promising vertical even during the, uh, the pandemic. So as I mentioned, if you, if you want to see this uh, presentation, like the, not just the presentation, but the full report, you can uh, see it on our website. It's open for free and you don't have to opt into anything. You can just read it by yourself. Like there's no, no commitment. Um, you don't even get pixeled unless you want so that we don't know you visited our website or anything. Um, and then if you want to reach out for me, uh, to me, you can reach out to Stack Marketer com or all the Twitter handles. I'm available there for you. Um, I wouldn't say whenever because I do have to sleep, but throughout the day, weekend or not, um, if you have anything that you want to ask me, um, you can go right ahead. Or you can, of course, ask me now because I'm ready for any sort of questions that uh, that our attendees have. Thank you, Emmanuel. That was really insightful presentation, and I'm sure that all of the attendees really enjoyed it. And we have started to get a couple of questions in as well, but not that many. So if any of the attendees still have some questions that you would like to ask Emmanuel, please, please just share your questions. Yeah, but, th there uh, needs to be an icebreaker, and I think people then might may open yes, up. Yes, <laughs> uh, but let's, let's start in. The first question that we have is, do you have any precise examples of educational and or entertainment products that you would recommend um, our affiliates to promote? Uh, not precise examples as offers. So one thing, you know, there's a pros and there's, there are pros and cons uh, with what I uh, focus on with Stack Marketer. I get a good overview about the trends, but I don't have specifics about offers when it comes to, you know, that offer name, here's the link for it. Uh, so that's something that unfortunately, I, I just have to say that I don't know exactly, but my recommendation would be uh, try to, for education, try to look at, you know, what each geo is doing when it comes to opening up schools. And maybe there are some opportunities to promote, you know, educational material for kids, but to their parents, of course, mm -hmm. that would be my first one. And of course, info products like how to make money online, how to, you know, uh, blog, how to become an affiliate marketer, these sort of things will always be good and probably might be even better now. So I would say those are the two categories I would look into more when it comes to uh, education. Mm -hmm. What about health? Do you have any examples there? Uh, health mostly offers that have to do with boosting your immunity. So there's, um, um, they're, they're the typical thing that have to do with uh, video sales that are, is it okay if I recommend, not recommend, but like suggest a few networks to look into and see what they uh, have as uh, good offers. Sure. So the two networks that I know are relatively strong on this are Max Web and max bounty so the two maxes of affiliate networks so they generally have offers that are highly recommended by other affiliates and also we've seen in uh, let's say like private talks with affiliates we're talking to them as well that video sales letters that have to do with boosting your immune system with uh, staying healthy staying fit at home those sort of things seem to be quite promising and it's probably something that you know it used to work before so you can actually go and check out a few funnels like spy a little bit and you don't have to start from zero if you haven't run this vertical before so also any data about finance services products for example quick loans well one thing that i didn't have in the presentation but something that you know things have accelerated and changed is for financial products think about again unfortunately i have to say local Right. I know as affiliates, we want to kind of run broad and just forget about it. 
But think about locally how many government loans and grants there will be. So if there are affiliate offers based around that, I would say it's probably the main one. I haven't tried because I haven't seen and it's still very difficult to focus on more than one thing, uh, at least for me. So I'm very focused on the newsletter itself. But, uh, you know, try to look at what sort of affiliate offers you can have for generating links for government loans, government grants. But the downside for this is, of course, that it's local. So you will have to choose bigger geos. So you look at Germany, France, US, UK. You don't look at little Austria, for example. Mm -hmm. And you talked about a lot of industries that are doing well. What do you think is the top one to benefit from, from this crisis that we're currently having? Top one. one. Well, I remember a funny, funny stat that I think I've seen also in Arthur's slide. But it's like a, a bread maker for at home is like the the highest growing. But on a more serious note, I think health and then things that have to do with finance. So health, obviously, everyone is more health conscious, and then insurance and finance. I kind of lump them together. People will at least a segment of people will be more careful with their finances. So I say, if you can do something with health and you have some ideas about it, probably the best one. And if not something that has to do with insurance, finance, those would be the categories I would look into. Um, I don't know if there's any other outlier. Of course, if you can, if you can beat the new Netflix, go right ahead. If you can promote the new Netflix locally, go right ahead. It's probably like an easy sell, but I don't think it's something that will benefit that much, you know, because Netflix is already huge and it has competition already. True. And uh, Roger wants to know, do you buy traffic yourself? Well, now I only buy traffic for stock marketer itself. So um, it, it's like a, it's a very specific product. Uh, I run some, well, I ran, I stopped Facebook campaigns uh, uh, once the pandemic started and then focused with buying traffic for Stack Marketer on other sources. My main source have actually been uh, other newsletters, which mm. sounds funny, but um, so one thing that happened during the pandemic, as you've noticed with Facebook and Google ads as well, traffic increased, price of traffic dropped. This is the same around a lot of other uh, a lot of other traffic sources. So it was much cheaper to get to buy traffic from other newsletters in our case. But uh, also one of the questions that we have here is um, what is your strategy to test uh, offers and verticals that you have not tested before? So during the pandemic, there might be mm -hmm. a lot of people that, uh, that are forced to try different verticals and yeah. finding, like trying new offers. So what, what's your kind of, um, what, what would you recommend to them? Where to start? Uh, the start is always the same, whether you're a new affiliate, whether you're pivoting to a new vertical, um, the start is look at a few spy tools, see what's working now, and then try to adjust them a little bit for you. Then test, see what data you gather, and then try to optimize. So try to filter placements, try to split test more landing pages, more ad creatives, depending on what, um, on what type of traffic you're running. So start with what you see working now, and then try to make it better. Making it better, I think, is the part that more people struggle with. So I will try to give a few bits of advice and a few examples here, but it's always, it's such an it depends thing that it depends concretely on your situation. So for example, when you get, when, when you want to get some information about what works, let's say you go to an affiliate network, you ask for the top offers, you get a list of top offers, you spy, and then you see what sort of creatives work on different types of traffic for that offer, right? and you try it out and you see it kind of doesn't work. Um, the issue it, it here is that what you have to also put, you know, kind of have to put the puzzle together yourself is ask your account manager if they can, so your affiliate manager, how many people are running that offer to generate that volume? Ask for concrete volume, not just APCs or conversion. You have to know both things. You have to know how many people are generating significant volume because it's very different if you know there's someone running it on push traffic or on native traffic on all platforms. There's like a hundred people that are making it work. And it's very different if just one person with an amazing email list is crushing it and pushing that offer to the top. It's not something you can replicate, but if a hundred people are doing it, you can probably replicate. So spy what's working, you know, put together a few of the informa bits of information that I gave you that uh, the others will give you as well. Ask your account manager from the traffic sources, ask your affiliate manager from affiliate network, look at a few spy tools and see what's working there. And then 
create yourself a, 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 a list of like top five verticals that I want to test and then split test the offers in those verticals using a few of the funnels that you find there. And don't remember, like try to ask, you know, how many people are running this profitably? How good is it really for my situation? You want to find as many offers as possible that people in your situation are making it work. That's, 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 um, that's something that's more difficult to find out, but you have to try at least. So you don't, at least you don't waste time. You, you, you will be able to drop off the things that are, you absolutely will not make work, right? As I gave the example, if it's one person, one affiliate, just crushing it and pushing everything to the top of uh, the top offers list for a network, then that's probably not going to be something you can replicate. Great. And we have time just for the last question. So everything that you've been talking here has been more kind of a demand focus. And we have someone asking here, do you have any insights on the supply side too that you could share with our audience? Uh, what, what are you referring to as the supply side? In, in terms of if you're a, if you're a publisher, for uh, example. If you're a publisher? If you're owning a website, then do you okay, have any yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, I don't know much about that, unfortunately. So... I don't want to give like wrong information in this case, since I don't know on the supply side. All, the one thing that I do know is, again, it's mostly from reading other people's data. So if you read a few uh, marketing news websites, you always get what's happening during the pandemic, right? Um, whether we like it or not, things like Facebook and Google are kind of trying to, let's say like they're coming out as winners a little bit. And then if you're the, if you're the smaller publisher who just has like a nice news website, that monetizes through ad cash, you will be a little bit in like people, uh, big companies are switching their budgets usually and they're switching their budgets is off from smaller publishers first. That's the unfortunate situation that I know of. So they keep Facebook and Google stuff, but they switch it off for, you know, their newsletter advertising from, or from an, a native source. But it's just the unfortunate situation. Of course, if it doesn't perform, but uh, yeah. That's the only thing I know, and I don't want to speculate more on uh, on this because I, right. I don't know it enough. Yeah, I think we have got some brilliant insight and some tips. And thank you so much, Emmanuel. And uh, if anyone have any other questions, as Emmanuel said as well, you can reach out directly to him. So thank you so much for your for your time tonight. You're welcome, and thank you for having me. And enjoy oh, the the rest you. of the event. <laughs> Cheers. So um, next up is our, um, our own Evgeny, who is based in our Barcelona office. So he will be following after Emmanuel's presentation where Emmanuel was sharing a lot of, lot of data and insights. So now it's going to be a bit of data and insights from our side and, and more tips what you can do to be profitable during, during the crisis. So the floor is yours, Evgeny. Hello, Greta. Thank you very much for the little introduction. Hello, guys. Barcelona is calling. I'm actually literally now waiting at the MWC at our booth. You know, this is, this is our MWC of uh, 2020. So I'm really excited, guys, about being able to share what we usually share when we go to the real events, to the, well, this is a real one, I mean, to the on-site events, you know, because Atkash always travels. Like, you can probably have seen me, have seen my colleagues. What we always do is that we always... Um, that we always share the insights. We always, uh, we're always trying to um, show you what is working. We're always trying to show you what is new in the industry. Let me share my screen right now so we can start with our presentation. Uh -huh. Can you see my screen? Crepe, could you? Could you make sure that yeah. everyone can see your screen? It's all Perfect. Good. You can hear me well. You can see me. Yes. Great. So, guys, most of you probably seen of us um, at the events. Unfortunately, at the moment, we do not know when the next event, like the on-site event, is going to happen. This is why we're so excited to share some insights to to show you how the industry changed from our perspective. So, um, let me get rid of this little section so we can start. Uh, so yeah, AdCash is a global surf online ad uh, advertising platform. Uh, basically, we're here to help you or advertise or to monetize your traffic worldwide on five formats. It's interstitial, pop, uh, push notification, pop under, native ads, and display ads. Uh, we're doing this worldwide, so we're concentrating on two sides of the business, but tonight I'm going to be uh, speaking about the advertiser part, because I myself am doing uh, onboarding on the new advertisers, and 
following them up and helping them grow their business, maybe suggesting some new things. So I'm the part of the uh, key, uh, key advertiser uh, management team. Uh, but this doesn't want to say that the publisher, uh, like the website owners, will not profit from this because, guys, this because everything what is about the advertisers also reflects uh, the publisher activity. So please tune in, listen, make notes, and uh, definitely after you will get my contact. So I will be able to connect you with the colleagues who are you know um, responsible for the publisher part, so they can um, help you get some insight insights from there. Um, so on today's agenda, what we're gonna see, what we're gonna check, uh, basically we're gonna we're gonna look at the traffic fluctuation at uh, one of our top, but please note of the top and mostly affected countries in Europe, because there's been a lot of countries affected as you might, you might have noticed from the news. You know we're all checking uh, we're all checking the websites, we're all checking the news, like other sources, just to see how the world changed from yesterday until today. So this is the new reality. So we kind of have to tune into and understand what is new and have to, how we have to adapt to it. So this is what the first part of the presentation is about, to look at the volumes, how they changed. Then uh, we're gonna talk about the new normal. Later I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell exactly what it is from our perspective. This is little disclaimer. It's not gonna be something like super new. It's gonna be something that we all know that's there, but some of us, maybe most of us actually on a daily basis, we do not you know, take this into consideration when we're programming our campaigns and doing the setups. So then we're going to talk about the importance of the good creative assets, uh, the campaign, let's say the advanced targeting features, uh, using your pl traffic platform, uh, traffic source uh, to the full extent, so to speak. Uh, then we're going to give you some little tips and then some little secrets, uh, which is the exclusive offer uh, we're going to offer after the presentation. So let's start. Let's start with some statistics. Uh, this is the slides taken from uh, John Hopkins Institute. I'm sure most of the visitors, the online visitors, uh, have heard about this. This is just for you guys to, rem to remind you that the situation is still lasting. You know, your local governments, of course, promised you like, okay, in one month, we're going to be able to go out. We're going to be, you know, we're going to open some restaurants and this and that. But this doesn't mean 100% guarantee that is going to happen, you know, because just last week, I didn't know that I will be, you know, that I would be able to go out. Um, so in every crisis, there is an opportunity. So this is what I would like to remind. And this is going to change. And we might have the second wave of the situation. So I would like to specify how AppCash suggests you profit from this very situation. So we decided to take uh, some of the top European, please mind us, European countries, because we have other top uh, geos in uh, the, rest, the rest of the world. Uh, we decided to take Spain, first of all, because as an example, desktop uh, Spain traffic. We decided to show you the volume fluctuations since the thing, I'm going to call it the thing, uh, since it started, so in February and um, until April, because we don't have data for May yet. So I myself based in Spain, so we have a little office here. And I would, you know, during the presentation, we'll be giving some local insights, like what happened, what I personally experienced, and what I personally, uh, personally applied to my partner's uh, job as well, and how we, you know, managed to profit from this. Uh, so as you can see, the difference of the volumes, uh, please, those volumes are impressions on desktop. Please mind, it's just the desktop renaissance, so to say, because the desktop increased dramatically, obviously, because I myself, I'm at the laptop the whole day. I'm sure most of the people who are watching this presentation, you're always, you know, watching at the screen. So then the second country, just to show you the correlation, just to show you the similarity is France. Uh, France uh, has been uh, has been uh, damaged by the situation, not like as the same as Spain. So there's been severe lockdown, maybe not as severe as in Spain, but still there is. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of people um, touched by this situation, so to say. So the volumes uh, increased dramatically. Uh, everyone like. Everyone possibly is working from home. Uh, everything is closed, so people are, you know, just browsing the internet. And this is the opportunity which you can take. Uh, you just have to, you know, look closer at every market and maybe think how to apply what you already have or what you might get uh, to, you know, profit from this from those volumes. The same. I'm not only talking about the advertisers because if you are the publisher, you are the first person to know that the volumes on the on your website has have grown. You know, so. This is your moment to go to more networks, you know, to, or to give more traffic to uh, to your uh, current um, 
to your current uh, partners where you sell traffic to. So maybe this is the time where you ask which offers are going crazy, you know, or when you already know what offers are go working crazy on your on your website. This is where you check uh, how many campaigns uh, the traffic uh, source where you sell it has, you know, and this kind of stuff. So the second one, uh, the third one, uh, sorry, is uh, UK. So the same desktop. Uh, the correlation is maybe not as uh, dramatic as it was for France and Spain, just because the UK introduced um, the lockdown a little bit later. So I'm, I'm going to bet that if we're going to check this in one month, the growth of the traffic will be even more. So the desktop, I'm sure, because UK was touched a little bit later by the whole situation. So this curve is still, it's still going just the same as the first, uh, the very first slide I showed you. Uh, taking all this into consideration, I would like to share the winning verticals. So, but, but again, please note that it's just our perspective. So we're taking into consideration only the at cash partners. Uh, only the at cash uh, results in this period, you know, our own, uh, our publishers, our um, advertisers. I'm going to talk, I'm saying advertiser here, I mean everyone. So I mean direct, I mean media buyers, affiliates, I mean uh, agencies, our competitors. I'm sure our competitors are watching us uh, at the moment as well. So we're all in this situation together. And uh, this is what I would like to uh, point out, what we have experienced. So. On the, uh, on the slide, uh, you see this huge increase. Please mind that it's just for the first vertical mentioned. So this is just for the VPN vertical, uh, the VPN, VPN apps, because it's not, I didn't put it first just because it, it has grown the most. It's just that it has grown. So it's one of those which are listed here, which I recommended to test with AdCash at least, because every traffic source is different. You know, everyone has their own specifics. So uh, later on, I'm going to talk about the, what AdCash is experiencing and suggesting. So uh, as you can see, I, I took here the United States, uh, just because I've already shown you three, uh, one of the one our top three countries. So I'd like to give you the insight of the States. The States was hit really hard, unfortunately, like, like uh, but again, it was, it was hit hard a bit later than the rest. So, and this is where we see the change of the results. So this is where they see the April is going crazy, crazy on, VPN app, please mind it's a VPN app installations in this case. The same uh, VO, so VPNs is something which you can run anywhere because it, it just works because people want to unlock, you know, people want to browse the internet because what else do you do? You just, you just watch your favorite shows or trying to, you know, unlock some content which is not uh, available in your country. This is why you use VPN. The same VOD, so video on demand, it's Netflix, it's Disney, it's, uh, it's many, other, um, many other resources where you can actually watch the show, like watch something new, you know, and just get distracted from the situation. This is working like crazy, especially in those countries which are severe, in a severe lockdown. Just imagine in Spain, we've been closed at, in our apartments without a chance to go for a walk if you don't have a dog, just for two months. So what else do you do? You're trying to, at some point, to escape the reality, you know, and how do you do this? You just, you know, you're just looking for the content which gives your brain some food, so to say. The same for the games. It's, uh, it's something which is, uh, which is growing crazily in all of the countries uh, where you cannot actually go out. Well, actually, in those where you can go out, you know, you still can see the growth. We at, at Cash, for example, we just uh, see this desktop and mobile, by the way. Uh, we see it has grown dramatically, like compared to the last couple of months, you know. It's, it's, just, it's just so different. I didn't have all the time of the world to just to present every, every vertical, so I'm going to briefly uh, mention some of them more. For example, dating. Dating in this case, it's like a vast category. You know, it's not the dating where you can personally meet like Tinder, you know. It's those apps, those uh, platforms where you can talk to people, where you can chat, where you can plan, you know, maybe the, the meeting this summer when the situation is over, you know, because people, most of the people, no, not most, many people are closed in by themselves so they really need we're social creatures we really need to talk to someone you know and sometimes just talking to someone random kind of gives you you know opens you up so it's like easier to talk to somebody you don't know that's why dating uh, those dating apps let's just say like chat apps they have uh, increased dramatically as well worldwide i would say the same for gambling gambling is um, you know when the online betting is down because the sport events are cancelled uh, gambling was kind of the substitute, you know, for, for especially for the affiliates, you know, because when it's your direct advertiser with gambling, uh, with the betting, sorry, 
it's not easy just to change the focus, you know, but you still can do it, but it's not that easy as for the affiliates, for example. For the affiliates, you already know what was working for the betting, for example. You just take those websites with where it was performing and you try to, uh, and you try, try to run your gambling offers because gambling allows you, think, think about it psychologically, what it does. It just allows you to distract. It gives you the same excitement the, the betting does. And it also gives you like this idea to win some money, you know, and to play and to enjoy your time. Because this is why it has grown uh, really, really a lot. The same for food delivery. Again, speaking about my own example, Spain, uh, what else to do when you're locked down for two months without, you know, being able to go to your like favorite bar uh, downstairs and have a drink? you eat so it's the basic thing which um, you know which nobody can deny like we all love so the food delivery is is growing like i don't know it's just booming here and i got a request from one advertiser so it was um it was an app uh for germany not for not for spain but germany was also in a severe lockdown so this app was it was a delivery food and before we actually we we did a test on this like uh, many months ago and it didn't work just because you know um there's a lot of uh, food apps. It's really difficult to enter the market. But we did the test again because we just thought, okay, the lockdowns are similar and it should potentially work, you know, on the, like in the country with a severe lockdown because people still want, want to do something. They want to do something different. Yes, you can cook at home, but at some point in the end of the day, you know, you want to cook, you want to eat something else. So the food delivery is also something which, is, uh, which has a big potential, at least for now, while we're growing. So not everything is so positive, of course, but... Um, it's not that negative as well. So let's let's uh, let's speak uh, br really brief, uh, real quick about those um, those verticals which went down. It's travel, sport betting, car car sharing, and e-commerce. Again, it depends on the country. Here I give you example of the impressions in this case. Please uh, take into consideration that those not installs or conversions. Those are impressions because the travel vertical is very vast. So it's difficult to you know because some running on CPC, some are running on CPL, some are running on um, CPM and stuff. So I just wanted to show you that how the um, how the number of campaigns using this travel vertical have dropped after the US got hit by the situation. So this sport betting um, actually uh, last week when I was about to present this, the sport betting did not have any potential. So I was I was about to speak it at, about a completely different thing. Now uh, it was announced that actually in May. Uh, UFC is having several events, so this is the very time you guys are going to use this opportunity because this is the opportunity. It's going to be just several events. You already have all the data. You already, already have uh, the sources which are converting in your traffic source, in your traffic platform, I mean. So this is the time you configure the campaign. This is the time, this is the time you kind of tailor the offer of the campaign, the landing page, and you just hit the market with this because... Well, we don't know. We have several events in May. Let's see if we have something in June, but we have to work with what we have at the moment, to just today. Car sharing, e-commerce, mm, nothing else to add. Of course, like if you're not able to, you know, to go far than one kilometer from your apartment, like again, here in Spain, you don't really use Uber and those kind of apps, you know? So this is something which, which paused completely. E-commerce is tricky because uh, it depends on what you're buying. The fashion industry, like was mentioned by uh, Emmanuel in his presentation, it dropped. Yes, because people are, you know, looking for more basic stuff to buy, like for something for, you know, food, uh, maybe something for the house when something uh, got broken, but they're not like really browsing for, you know, for the new dress, for the new shoes, because nobody knows when we're going to be like freely go out actually. So here we are slowly going to the new normal part. What is the new normal I would like to talk about? The new normal in this situation is thinking locally. So it's just being, being able to think as your, as your customer. So what does your customer need at the moment? Don't forget that every conversion which is made is made by a real person. So it's just like the statistics that we're seeing every day in the tracking tools or you know, uh, other KPIs. It's the real person who saw your deal your so your service, your product, and made the conversion. And to make this happen, we have to, to ourselves, first of all, answer to the several key points, which I would like to talk about here. So is your offer considered as a basic need during the COVID? Again, meaning if it's a food, if it's some entertainment, you know, something that people, you know, can use right now and, you know, get some profit out of it, like some mental profit, some, you know, physical or whatever, then does your offer match the current uh, consumer needs? So 
again, it's, it's about the same thing. So is it something that I can apply now to feel happier? Because this is something which has a bigger potential than something, you know, that can maybe in the future bring you some, some money, some joy or something. I want it now because now I'm locked down in the lockdown. So I want to feel better. So does your offer, uh, does your offer offer this, so to speak, then, uh, we also have to take a closer look at how does the lockdown affect the market you want to enter. You know, because we all know that before we're using those tire systems, like tire one, tire two, tire three. So we were dividing the countries by just maybe the, the mentality, maybe the price of the traffic, maybe uh, kind of the economic situation, you know, the political situation, many other factors. Right now, there's like the global doesn't exist, like the tire, they do not exist now, the borders are closed. So we have to concentrate on every specific market, like on a granular base, like granular, you know, like we have to take a closer look what is happening when the government promises to open the country, when people can start traveling and those kind of things. And yes, uh, the, fourth, uh, the fourth point, the economic situation. Are the people who are, who are you promoting the offers to, are they supported by the local government as well? Because you know, when you offer, you know, uh, casinos and gambling and, you know, just an example, maybe this is the time where you offer like a free, like more free spins, or maybe this is the time where you offer, um, you know, uh, like a smaller uh, deposit to start and this kind of stuff. Just an example, Italy, we all heard about this, how Pornhub, uh, actually offered like free access to premium. This was genius, but actually what they really did, they off they didn't offer it for free in Italy. They offered only the test period for free, which is seven days, and then you get billed. So this is something to think of and come up to the market, taking into consideration the local situation. But then when you have the offer, uh, you kind of have, you need the salesperson to sell it. Um, the salesperson in this case is your creative. So it's your landing page, it's your website, it's if we're talking about mobile applications, it's your store, if your, your app store page. If your app store page has really bad comments, if people are talk, constantly talking about, about the bugs and stuff, and if you send the traffic there too, so you kind of cannot wait, you kind of cannot expect that it's going to be, you know, booming. So you have to take, to, take to, uh, those kind of things into consideration that it takes milliseconds for a person to make the conversion, to want it, you know, to see it, to want it, and to make the action. Here we go to the conversion funnel. It's kind of a mixture of the sales funnel and the marketing funnel. You know, when you kind of have to, first of all, explain why, like speak about the products, promote the little bits of brand awareness, then you kind of have to cause the interest, or in this case, all your previous activity causes the interest. The interest goes into desire of the person to have this product. So if you manage to let people know that this is the very product they need right now in their situation, or maybe if it doesn't, you know, uh, correspond to what they need, but if you explain that it does, this has much more opportunity to reach to your buyer persona. It's, I mean, I'm saying buyer in this case, but it's, it's just the person who does the conversion. And then the loyalty part, it's, well, it also depends on the offer. Some people have, have this, some people don't. So this is how you kind of follow up or after the, the purchase, this is how you warm up your audience, how you care about them, how you show that you care. Also the call to action is a very important thing. So if the user is landed like to some landing page with like tons of text, and if there is no uh, obvious buttons, you know, where to click to make the presentation, this is where you lose them, you know, and this is where you lose the traffic as well. And sometimes when you're paying for the traffic, you kind of, you know, lost your money in, in nothing. Let me be real quick. Uh, so the third part is very important. When we have, when we understand what the people, what people want, let's think about it like at this candy store. So this is the store which has really like, like a lot of, a lot of candies with beautiful packaging, tasty. Then you need someone to sell it. So your landing page is the one who's going to sell those candies, you know, like to push people to do this, to explain them, like, okay, this is not the candy you want now, but you might want it in one hour. This is your landing page. But now you need actual people who would visit your store. And for this, uh, here we're talking about the traffic. So and to get the traffic properly, properly, you kind of have to play with your setup because setup, if not 50% of the success, it's a lot of percent of the success, trust me. So in this case, you kind of have to use the whole, um, you have to use the whole potential of your platform. You have to uh, test different payout models. It's CPM, CP target is something that AdCash has. It's like a dynamic CPM. If you want later, we can talk about this uh, in private. CPC, CPL, CPI says, try different approaches to promote your campaign. You don't have to go crazy with the budgets. This is also one of the points uh, I'm talking here. Like invest real budgets, invest something which you personally think can work, you know, like because 10 bucks 
it's not enough to like for a mobile application, you know, when you run it globally, because seriously, people test like this, like you want traffic from 20 countries and then you add $10 of the daily budget and you run it on CPM. And then after this, you cannot say that the traffic is not something, you know, that didn't work out. It's just what you wanted to present did not meet with those people who potentially could, you know, convert on this. This is why the setup is very important. Also test different traffic formats the different ad formats because many platform has their own. So ask your manager uh, from your traffic platform what they have, what works the best, ask for their advice always and tune into the campaigns. Next, I would like to speak about, uh, a bit, again, a bit more about ad cash, about what we offer, about what we have. So express campaign, advanced campaign targeting. A uh, little disclaimer, this is uh, available for everyone. So it doesn't mean that advanced campaign is something for advanced users. No, this is for everyone. It's just that express campaign, you know, if you still do not know who your audience is, but you want to explore, this is express campaign. It's quick, it's easy, it's super user friendly. Just go launch and launch your campaign. Advanced campaign is um, a bit more complicated uh, targeting approach, but it's still like, it's still very user friendly and still easy. Uh, so here we have three rocking features. One of them is website categories. This is a perfect feature, just an, ex an example, like what you might test, you know, because it also depends on the offer, it also depends on the advertiser. The website category kind of helps you to promote your product on the potentially converting vertical. So if you already know that, okay, I have finance related offer, so I wanna show it. I already tested the uh, run on site, like uh, on everything, on all the websites. If it didn't work out, maybe I should apply some different approach because the offer converted, but not as good as I want. So this is the tool to use. Um, then uh, user interest, it's our own retargeting tool. It's really, really, really cool. So I encourage you guys to test it. It's just that it's uh, not available on all the payout models, but this is the tool with, which uh, helps to connect uh, your offer with, with the users, depending on their behavior on, on the website. So we're showing your offer to the users who potentially already are interested in what you're trying to sell or just promote. Then uh, really quick uh, keyword targeting. It's a shortcut to specific section of the website. It's really cool for sport betting. It's really cool for games, for finance, or for dating. So if you know which section of the websites you would like the user to land uh, with your offer, again, with your cool landing page, this is the tool to use. So here I kind of have to wrap up, uh, guys. It's, it's been only, uh, yeah, some 20 something minutes. It's not, it's not possible to highlight everything, but I really encourage you to think locally right now because this is the new normal. You have to apply what you have. You have to, to what do you have? So you have to work with, with the offer. You have to work with the now, with the situation at the moment. So think locally, try to be your customer because we're all people, so we all know what, what we need, you know? So try to address this kind of thing. Focus on what is, what is happening uh, what's what's working so always ask your manager from the from the traffic platform or if you're a publisher manager so if you're promoting if you're monetizing your website also can contact your manager ask them ask for suggestions ask just chat to them like just hear what's what everyone else is doing because we're all here together the industry has been struggling so and if we are all involved is if we do it right we're gonna prosper i'm sure never forget about a b maybe c d e tests you know because one landing page beautiful cool good colors good call to action maybe sometimes it's not enough and i've seen this a lot you know when the actual a b c d e uh test is actually working really really good then fine tune and optimize your campaigns always and always stay in touch with your traffic manager guys here i have to mention something else which is very very exciting so please take make notes at cash wants to support those who do not know us yet but those who would like so here we're giving some welcome bonuses for the new advertisers uh, please contact me or some of my colleagues and ask about this. So you will be, if you visited this webinar, you will be eligible for this bonus. I would like to thank you very much for spending your time, for being involved. Please ask us more questions. Please text me, my colleagues who would connect you to the relevant people. Just ask and apply all the knowledge that you're getting right now because tomorrow will be different. The day after tomorrow will be different. And this is what is what the new normal is. I would like to thank you very much. If we have time for the questions, let us maybe start. Yes, thank you, Evgeny. Thank you so much for this. Um, let's um, start with the questions shortly because I can see that we are a bit of um, running out of time, but- um, Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. And uh, let's, um, uh, let's start with the first question. Um, as an advertiser, what would you tell them? Which country is the best one to start from? 
I think it's a very deep question, but uh, to open it very quick, uh, you, ha you have to know your product. So if your product is well translated into English or let's say German, Spanish, you know, if it's um, prepared for the market, so oh, it depends how your product is prepared. Then also you kind of have to know where you want to test it. If we were talking again about ad cash, because I can speak for us, uh, if you want to test your product and if you have no idea where it might potentially work, I always recommend the States because this is a very versatile, uh, so to speak, um, location because there's people from everywhere, like from every corner. The mentality is so different. It's so open-minded. It's, so, it's such a beautiful and good mixture, you know, in, this, in the case, case of mentality, the psychology of the user again. So this is a very good th way to start. Plus, again, everyone is usually starting with the English, so everything's translated in English and this is the country, you know needless to say. So. But um, if you, you were talking about A-B testing and testing different yes. creatives, test, testing different landing pages, what would you say, how long should you test a campaign to get the proper data and then uh, before you start optimizing it? Well, obviously, which was not on the slide, the tracking is, is, is the most important thing, you know, the track, like the landing page and everything and the tracking. So it's really important how you are measuring the results, you know, because if you just send some kind of like, you know, if you spend uh, some hundred dollars and you don't know how many leads you actually got, if you're not sure if they came from organic or from the paid traffic, then this is not a good test. So make sure that every dollar counts. So make sure that you are measuring everything. And then again, depending, you know, when you come up with some idea, you kind of expect what you want to get from this. So you know how much your product costs, you know, like what return on investment you want to get from. This is where the calculation starts, you know, because sometimes my advertisers are asking me, okay, how much should I put, for example, the price per registration or something like this? And then to answer this, I have to know what they offer, you know, like if it's, I don't know, a dating, let's, let's say, you can, if they have some paid content, how much they get from this paid content, you know, like how much they actually profit from, from the conversion. This is, I think, what advertisers have to, first of all, think themselves because we sell traffic we help you know to make the product go up but we cannot mm, know what you expect from your own product you know if it makes sense right and i have one more last question that, sure. something that was already asked to menu but we ran out of time and yes, there is someone who would like to would like to still know the answer so i thought yes. let's let's put it as a last question so would you rely on automated bidding types on some platforms or would you recommend advertisers to buy, buying CPM, CPC and doing the optimization themselves? That's, a very, that's also a very big question. It depends on the product. It depends on the traffic format where you're testing, you know, because if we're talking about banners, if we're talking about push notifications, it's all about the creative. So you kind of have to come up with a bit good creatives. Then you have to make sure that after, you know, making the click, the user lands on a very clear landing page when, where they see the, the value, where mm -hmm. they see the call to action button and when they actually convert, you know, because sometimes, or if we talk about pop under in this case, uh, in this case, there is no creative. It's just like the, the landing page, which, op which pops up immediately, you know, and the user kind of has this millisecond to decide, okay, I want this product or no. So, and again, the mentality part, again, the language, like the translation, because sometimes I see pretty bad translation of the landing pages, you know, which is also a very, you know, how can you, how can you explain something? How can you, you know, make people want it if it's presented badly? You know, like if I see something written, you know, and I'm, I'm like a Russian speaker, I and mean, I sometimes see campaigns coming from Asia, coming from somewhere else, when I see that it's translated, not in the way that the native like, speaker would, then I'm like, okay, what is this offer about? You know, like every detail matters. And in this case, coming back to the bidding, I think in this case, so it's kind of yes and no. It depends on many factors. So if you want to discuss it, please come back to me. I will uh, look at your offer and then we'll take it from there. Or okay. discuss it with your traffic source if you're buying traffic from somewhere else. I'm not, uh, yeah. And come to AdCash as well. <laughs> Thank you, Evgeny. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys, for the attention and enjoy the, uh, the next presentation. It's really cool. So yeah, now it's time to introduce you to Artur, who is head of partnerships uh, in Volume. And uh, I think it's going to lead, lead on very nicely from Evgeny's presentation, how he was saying how important is tracking and you need to know they have, what you're spending on your ads, what's, what's kind of the return you're going to get. So Artur, go ahead. Hi guys, I hope everyone, everybody can hear me well. Um, I'll be sharing my screen right now. So please scream in the comments if you cannot see that. 
All right, so uh, topic of my presentation is business as usual, uh, or how to stay positive and profitable during the pandemic. So uh, the quick agenda is I'll be talking about the, why you should stay positive, what's the, despite the situation outside, and the agenda is pretty simple. So uh, uh, first, a few words about me, a few words about volume, um, then I will move to the, to the main part of the presentation, but I would like to touch a bit on the why we are talking about this stuff right now. Uh, where is Omdem or the affiliate marketing and all that? What's the global uh, overview of the situation? What's the digital overview of the situation? Then I will move to the key point of the presentation, which is market insights. And at the very end, I have something special for you, for all of you. So please bear with me for about 20 minutes max. Uh, okay, so a few words about me. Uh, my name is Arthur, uh, and I'm a head of partnerships at Volume. Um, I'm three years in the industry. Uh, I, I skipped my last name because this is something you can twist your tongue trying to, 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 to pronounce it. Uh, so over two years in the industry, I started in the, uh, in the Volume Tracker as a support manager. So I was answering tickets uh, and Skype conversation about how to send things up in Volume. Um, then I moved to Volume DSP. Uh, that was uh, that was the, the the at the point where Volume DSP was moving out of the beta, so there was growing guy crazy. They need people, and I, I decided to switch. So I was working with the traffic, which and I learned a, a lot, a lot uh, during that time. Then I moved to the business development, so something more connected with the with the actual business, so to say. Um, and then I came back to Volume Tracker to take care of the all the relations we have with uh, with the partners. Um, and I really enjoy what I do right now. So this is something I'm really interested. Um, and uh, I came from banking. So that was a pretty interesting switch for me because of the, you know, this is something like switching the, the, the car to a fighter jet or the other way around. So this is quite, quite, uh, quite a change. Uh, all right, few words about volume. Um, you probably all know that, but volume is, a, for those who don't know, it's a cloud-based ad tracker. Uh, with built-in optimization tools. So whoever's buying traffic, uh, you can have the volume to track all your campaigns in one place. Uh, we are on the market since 2014 as the first cloud-based tracker. Uh, we're based in Krakow, Poland. Uh, we have a sunny weather today, so that's cool. Um, something we can brag about is we have more than 99.9% uptime. Uh, I don't think anybody else can brag about it in this way. Uh, so even when the Amazon outage was was there in 2017 and half of the internet was not working properly, we were still tracking everything uh, correctly. So we know our stuff, our stuff pretty well. Okay, so why we are talking about everything around us? This is uh, the global view, so to say. So it's literally a global crisis. Um, we are here because, uh, because of the coronavirus and it has impact on every single aspect of our lives. Um, the crisis is touching every, almost every single country on the world. Uh, there's like uh, 210 uh, territories affected. I know there's like only 195 countries in the world, but only few of them are, they don't have reported cases of coronavirus. Like, and I have to like uh, in my notes here, it's Nauru, Micronesia, or Palau. Uh, so countries like that, and of course, uh, uncle came from North Korea, also doesn't report any cases, so all good out there. But as I said, impact is everywhere, social, economic, political, cultural, we are not allowed to go on a party. Um, the economic crisis might be very deep. So this is something we will remember uh, this is something that will leave its mark on us, and this is not something we will pass quickly. Um, I would, uh, for, for, you know, to compare that, I would compare that to something like 9-11, which happened in the U.S. Um, and I, I think pretty much everybody knows know what I'm talking about when it comes to 9-11, and you know where you were when you find out about 9-11. You know what you were doing, on, or you know who told you this kind of stuff, so you will remember that uh, crisis. Uh, as well. Um, the next slide is about digital view compared to the global view. So let's take a look at the digital side of things. Uh, technology is now more important than ever. It's helping, it's, it's helping fighting the, 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 the crisis, fight, fighting the pandemic. Uh, I don't know whether you can imagine being in a crisis like that like 100 years ago. I can definitely not imagine that without the smartphones, internet, Netflix, 
and stuff like that. Uh, so even people who are not very digital have to, you know, switch to the to the digital channels to stay, you know, stay in touch with their family, uh, to work from home and stuff like that. Um, and uh, the reason I'm talking about this is like the need is a matter of invention. So if you take a look at all these logos I have here, these are pretty powerful companies and they have one thing, which is uh, they have in common one thing. So all of these were founded during the crisis or straight after the crisis during the recession, uh, which followed. So WhatsApp, Groupon, uh, Uber, Pinterest, Instagram, Slack, all these giants were founded during the crisis. So why do I talk about all this? It's because we are lucky. Uh, we are lucky to be in the industry we are right now. Uh, I don't think there's better time to be in affiliate marketing than now. Uh, and the reasons that we are online and remote since always, affiliates are working from a whole the globe. Uh, they are, you know, changing places. Uh, all they need is a, is an internet connection and a, and a MacBook. Uh, the so we are not producing anything physical. That's another thing. So we cannot really compare ourselves right now to the people who are having, let's say, you know, factories. They are producing something physical. We are only buying traffic digitally to something which can be physical. Of course, not every offer is, you know, um, selling something physical. There are also like digital, I don't know, VODs or something like that. But still, imagine the comfort you have right now. If you have, I don't know, you are producing uh, a cups like this, and the five minutes later, you can switch to selling pens like this, right? The Whoever is, you know, producing physically pens or cups doesn't have a luxury like that. So this is something we, we should uh, we should really uh, you know remember uh, and we are adapting fast so whatever happens in the market we are there to uh, we are there to you know make the change and and follow with the campaign because how much time uh, it takes to to put up a campaign online. Okay, so. Coming back to the topic, why to stay calm, why to stay positive? So this is the chart um, which is showing changes in the amount of traffic uh, tracked by volume over the last 12 months. Uh, so the chart has been normalized so I could show you all the animations at the same time. And as you can see, there's no like many huge big drops or spikes in the traffic. Um, so um when it comes to when it comes to visits and clicks as you can see uh the green mark uh, the green line is, is showing the clicks and the red one is showing the visit and this is something very important and very interesting uh to see because as you can see over the last uh two months let's say the number of clicks was growing faster than the number of visits so this is something very positive, uh, and this is something which which you should uh, be looking at it right now. Uh, what does it mean? It means that you know visits in volume are the clicks from ad to the landing page, and clicks are clicks from the landing page that offer. That means when the grow happens on the uh, clicks, the ones from landing page that offers, the click through rates are going up. Um, so that means overall traffic quality it goes up uh click-through rates are higher so generally more people are clicking and more conversions uh are there so when we compare the first week of january versus the first week of april we have 20 percent increase in conversions we see globally in volume and we see 32 percent increase in the number of landing page clicks uh so i believe that's cool for uh, for all of us isn't it uh, so when, when, the, when the whole crisis unfolded, I was talking with my partners, uh, with a lot of partners who are selling traffic and they said, oh man, there's so much more traffic. So they were getting more traffic, they were selling more traffic. Uh, and I believe Evgeny uh, was showing that on, the, on his charts as well, spikes everywhere. Um, but what, the, what is uh, the very good sign here? That quality follows the, not the, the quantity. So there's more traffic and the traffic is still converting. So we shouldn't be uh, worried at all. The next slide is showing pretty much the same thing, but in the shorter time period. Um, and I, I wanted to show you that because uh, this is something we were observing over the last month. As you can see, all these lines are very close to each other in terms of the growth. 
So, of course, impressions are are not following because not every every customer in volume is uh, is uh, tracking impressions because this is not something uh, you can. This is something you can pr you probably skip, right? But the the lines are very close to each other. It's very visible. Uh, again, no spikes, no drops. Uh, the traffic is there. The quality stays at the same level, and the number of uh, of clicks is uh, higher and very stable. Uh, so let's move to the most important graph I wanted to show you today, and this is uh, this graph shows money. It shows conversions pretty much. So uh, in terms of uh, conversions, uh, it's again stability. And the movement we see around here is about 10%. Uh, the biggest spikes, uh, so something we can observe right here and right here, these are the weekends. So this is quite normal because not every advertiser is running campaigns over the weekend. Um, and it's, it's you know, very typical. Uh, if I would be a media buyer, if I will have something like that, like a chart of my performance would look like that over, over a month, I would be very happy, so to say. So, so this is something we would like to, to you know, stay uh, for the sake of all of us. Um, and also this graph is showing another very interesting thing, uh, which are the, the pink columns you can see. So these pink columns are showing the number of custom conversion types which are set up by our clients. And what does it mean that this is, it's actually rising. It's, it, it grew from the very beginning of, uh, of the year till now by 11%. So this means our users are where, uh, were open to the different types of conversions. Uh, they were offered from affiliate networks. So upsells, um, in-app purchases, stuff like that. Whatever you can uh, set up as a custom conversion, whatever happens after the initial conversion, uh, so this was increasing. This, uh, that means uh, this is something uh, you may consider as an option when you're buying traffic. So when I was saying that uh, affiliates are adapting fast, this is only the proof that, uh, you know, that stuff like that is, um, is happening. Um, okay, so enough charts for a while. Um, you see, so you see, I, I, like uh, the, the, the three charts I, show, I showed you, it's show, I'm talking about it and I'm saying that this is all good. Uh, so if I'm saying all good, you may ask what to focus on. Uh, and this is, again, not a rocket science. Uh, there's only like very, very, two, um, very simple uh, answer to that question, which is simple things in normal people. Because whoever is converting on your campaigns, you have to remember that this is somebody who would probably convert six months ago. Uh, but the only reason he hasn't seen your ad or was not online at that point and was not converting was that because probably he was at work or he was busy with other stuff. Now he's working from home or, you know, staying at home and is browsing the internet and seeing your ad, right? So, um, so these are the normal people who are buying stuff, uh, working from home or staying at home. Uh, during the lockdown. Um, the third thing you have to pay attention is lockdown and no lockdown news. Uh, I think uh, both Manu and Evgeny were talking about this. So this is very important in terms of adjusting the campaign per country, per uh, let's say vertical. Um, this is something we, we, you should pay attention during, the, during your campaigns and buying traffic from, from the ad networks. Uh, okay, so what to avoid? Uh, this, uh, I saw that in many, many communications from ad networks. Uh, so the number one thing is Black Hat. Uh, so let's be honest, Black Hat, we call it Black Hat, but we should also, we could call, also call it uh, illegal. Uh, so this meme is showing actually the FBI. So it's about the USA because the USA is first on the, on the front with, the, with, the, with fighting with all the you know, fraudsters, but uh, you know, every single country has something like FBI, right? So, and they are not working from home most likely. Uh, and if they are working from home, let's, uh, let's, try, you know, let's try to keep them at home uh, because of the 
uh, because of the ad campaigns which are online. Um, so whatever is going on related to the coronavirus, like you know contributions, ch like for charity which are not registered, which are scam, uh, you know financial relief and stuff like that, fake cures and vaccinations or uh, like testing kits. This stuff, trust me, this is very very well monitored. Uh, and in terms of uh, the account, uh, you mean, I mean, the ban banning of your account will be the, the least of your problems, probably. So this is something you should avoid. Uh, and of course, you know, if you will break the network rules, they will probably ban your account and getting a new one is not that easy because everybody would like to buy traffic right now. So stay uh, on the green zone, uh, so to say. Um, okay, so after these two let's say general tips, I would like to show you two verticals which are very hot right now and uh, they which should be worth your attention. Uh, the first one is app installs. So um, the data I'm using in this presentation is, uh, the one I showed you before is from volume, but I also have some data from my partners. Um, and in terms of app installs, it's of course Apps Flyer, the, our partner who is doing the, um, the attribution. Uh, software used by the uh, whoever is running app installs, they might know uh, they know what's going inside the app, right? So, Apps Flyer reported a uh, thirty percent increase in the all apps related to finance and investments. Uh, so you probably all saw that ad with Alec Baldwin. I would say this kind of apps will work well now. Uh, why? Because stocks are are record lows, uh, and this is something. You know, people would like to have uh, to use that opportunity to take, uh, you know, their money to invest to to get some extra money on the side. Second important thing is gaming and social casinos. Um, so I think Evgeny also touched on that a bit. Uh, and AppsFire was reporting 35% increase in this kind of uh, in this kind of apps. Of course, everybody's at home. Uh, if you are, you know, the, if you can't live with Netflix, you watched everything, you are moving to your smartphone and you are playing games or, or something like that. And the next thing, and this is something really huge, um, all fitness apps, how to stay fit at home, how to work, how, how to do the proper workout at home. Uh, you know, everybody is uh, at home sitting and eating, uh, like if Kenny said again. So these feeds apps are on the on the wave right now. And I expect that this, this is not going to change anytime soon. Uh, with all the gyms closed, this is probably, uh, you know, uh, this will probably stay longer with us. Uh, so apparently all you need right now to stay fit is an app, but uh, trust me, this, this, this kind of apps are really hot right now. And this, the installs are there. Uh, okay, in the same report, Apps Flyer uh, was showing a lot of data, and these two charts I wanted to share with you during the presentation today. Uh, so, these two charts are showing uh, app install growth uh, at a different stage of the pandemic in different countries. So, on the left, uh, there is Germany, and on the right, it's South Korea. So. The, the line which is right here, it's showing the cases of coronavirus confirmed in the country. So as you can see, and that's, uh, that's very interesting, if uh, once the cases are going up, the installs are skyrocketing. Uh, once they peak, they're still uh, going up. And in Korea, we saw the, let's say the next stage because the Korea has it, all the, 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 the crisis in their country before that. If, uh, once the once the coronavirus cases are going down, the number of app installs is also going down, but not as sharp as it grew. So the opportunity is there um, in terms of in terms of apps. Uh, this is of course showing the the general uh, apps. So in my opinion, this is a very good insight given the fact that everyone is predicting the second wave of the pandemic, but also um the fact that the decrease is not that big uh is that people are you know adapting to the to the new normal so to say uh okay the next vertical i wanted to talk about is e-commerce uh so the chart on the left 
uh, is showing the growth in different categories uh, of, uh, of products. And of course, you know, the most important stuff is medical, baby products, cleaning, food and beverage. But uh, what I would like for you to focus on is right here, health and wellness and toys and games. Health and wellness is nothing else that very popular Nutra campaigns. So I believe with everybody at home, uh, with, uh, with no access to gyms, not everybody can or you know, prefer to work at home. Uh, people will gain some weight uh, and this is happening. I, I had a call with my colleague from, from, the, from the company uh, earlier this week. And when I saw him, he, I, I was like, oh my God, bro, uh, you know, put yourself together uh, because he gained some weight. So I expect people will be uh, hungry for everything related to the fit stuff. Uh, so the apps I mentioned for sure, but everything around the, you know, supplements and stuff like that, this is something you can, uh, you can make some money uh, in the next months. So the, I would say the project Summer Body 2020 has not starting yet or is just starting. So you should be there with your Nutra campaigns. Um, if you would like to go deeper with the, uh, with the e-com campaigns, um, the tool list I'm showing on the right side, this is something uh, uh, stackline.com prepared and this is, it's showing top declining and top growing categories from um, from the e-commerce and I chosen only the 10 to show you. Um, so we have, and I think uh, also Manu told about the, so the second, second fastest growing category is bread machines. So that's very interesting. Uh, so as you can see, it's not very obvious what to promote, but bread machines were one of the, on the rise. Uh, and as you can see, number eight is weight training. So people are ordering stuff, you know, to work out from home. Um, nothing surprising on the, let's say the red uh, part of the list, uh, everything relating to travel was, was having a drop, uh, not, not surprised at all. Uh, I've put a link right here so you can check it uh, after the presentation. It, it, it contains, I believe, 100 items on every, every list. Um, okay, so the next part regarding e-commerce, I've chosen the four elements from the same list of stackline.com and, and it's connected to the e-commerce as well. So weight training grew by 300% uh, and I expect this is, this is something which will stay with us because the gyms are not yet open and they probably will not be opened anytime soon. Uh, craft kits and projects, this is something to keep your, your kids busy. Uh, you know, if you, have, if you are having kids right now, uh, you have, uh, let's say, some problems how to, you know, keep them, uh, let's say, quiet, quiet and, and, and stable with its mind. Plus, you know, kids are bored very, very quickly. So this kind of stuff will be, will be going off the shelves. So these two are, let's say, the green items. In terms of yellow items, we can take a look at even then party supplies and camping equipment. And the reason I'm talking about this is not for you to promote this kind of stuff like camping equipment and even party supplies, but these kind of categories reported a uh, drop like 40% to 55%. Um, and the, the focus should be not only on the items which are very green right now because they will not uh, grow forever, but something like, and, and I take the camping equipment as, a, um, as an example here, uh, something which is dropping right now might be very hot tomorrow. Because when we compare that to the traveler industry, which is taking a heavy hit right now, uh, people will most likely look for traveling within their countries. So, you know, having the camping equipment as an example, they will need for stuff like that. So, in terms of, oh, I'm sorry, in terms of, you know, looking for products which are, might be worth promoting, um, there is a lot of stuff you can find on the other side, let's say not growing right now, which are actually declining, but this stuff will be, will be going up once uh, the situation will be coming, coming back to normal. Um, so opportunities are there uh, and they are not always visible in the obvious places. Uh, so something not, uh, something forgotten today will be, will be in the high demand 
tomorrow. Um, okay, so I, I didn't want it to my, my presentation to be too long, but uh, I believe with Manu and Evgeny, we gave you so much stuff that you can have some kind of an insight, you, you, you have something to think about, and you might feel a bit overwhelmed right now. Verticals, countries, you know, offers, click-through rates, all that stuff we mentioned. So I got one more tip for you, which will be very useful for you. Um, and this is related to volume. So take control of your campaigns. Uh, volume has the automizer right now. This is the feature we were building for a long time. It's based on the API connection with the traffic sources. Uh, and it lets you control the campaigns you have in the traffic sources from the volume panel. So you can pause and resume cam your campaigns. Uh, you can, you know, you can, you, you, without even leaving the volume panel, uh, you can stop and resume, you can bid up and down uh, based on placement zones, exclude non-converting traffic, and you can be sure that your data was 100% correct. Um, and the second part of the info is that, you know, this is, this is going automatically. So with Automizer, you can set up custom roles on multiple elements of your campaign. Uh, and it will take care of your campaigns immediately after conditions uh, are met. So you'll be eliminating, eliminating bad placements immediately and buying more from the green zones, uh, you know, instantly. So this is something we were building for a long time. Uh, this is something which can be, uh, which can be, you know, the game changer in terms of your campaigns uh, without the hassle of, you know, scrolling through the reports. Um, and I also said at the very beginning that I will have something special for you, and here it is. Um, I prepared a special promo, uh, which will be available through the AdCash landing page. So the QR code that you see on the right, you can get inside and take it. Uh, you can also go straight to volume.com slash AdCash. And I have a cool discount uh, on every single price which is listed uh, on our website. So this cover starts at $62, uh, but also uh, because of the ad conf, I, uh, we have added some special, uh, let's say presents to the, to the list. So this cover comes with unlimited campaigns, profit plans come uh, with anti-fraud kit and grow plan is coming with the email notifications. You can save even more with the annual plans and every single plan is having Automizer for free right now. So go there to get volume. Whoever is running campaigns with the other tracker right now, we get, get in touch and we will match the price of your current tracker uh, as you have it right now. Uh, okay, this is something I wanted to share with you. Uh, I hope you find it useful. Uh, for whoever you would like to stay in touch, just feel free to ping me on Skype. You can find me on LinkedIn. You have my email right here. You have the support email uh, in case of any, any technical more questions. Uh, we also have our volume Facebook group which, where we are sharing all the insights and, uh, and the updates. And we are available in every single forum uh, which, is, which is known in the industry. Uh, so I wish you all the best in terms of your campaigns. I wish you stay safe and healthy. Uh, and I really hope we can get, uh, you know, meet in person on the conference, not uh, over, the, over the web, but uh, I really hope that, uh, that the, all the stuff we were showing you was, was good for you and you will take some actionable insights uh, there on the market and use it in your campaigns. Thank you very much, Artur. Um, I think that was, was a great presentation. And uh, we do have a few questions for you as well. Uh, I can see that Roger has already asked three of them. So um, I, will, I will start straight off. Um, one of the first things that um, he would like to know is, um, how will free tracking impact media buyers' ability to profit? What's your uh, thought about that? Free tracking? Yes. Uh, well, I don't really think that price has anything, uh, you know, to do with the profit. Uh, of course, if you are paying some kind of a price, you are taking it from your profit. So it has some, let's say, connection, but it's definitely more about the quality of the, of the tool you use. Uh, I don't know. I, I believe that I know where, it's, where the question is coming from because there, there is a, on the market, we see a lot of trackers which are competing with, uh, with us with the, uh, with uh, free plans, so to say. Uh, it's in the secret. Uh, other tracks were competing with volume only with the price. 
uh, and we are all aware of that. Uh, we are not willing to jeopardize the quality of our service and the startup we are associated with, uh, um, you know, by moving into free tier, if, 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 if that's the question. Uh, in terms of in terms of connecting that with the profit is, it's like first rule in the in the economy is like there's no such thing as a as a free uh, as a free lunch, right? So you can easily check on the forums how often other trackers have some kind of an issues, and this is something I've touched on the very beginning. Like we have, we have we've been tracking everything properly, even half of the internet was not working properly. So this is something to think of. Uh, of course, I leave the decision up to the everyone's. Uh, you know, the decision should be the only, the, the, the person who is making the decision should be the one who is choosing, right? But uh, I, I, I can compare that to the, I don't know, the bank you have an account with and you have, uh, you know, if, if the bank is giving you a free money, that's cool. I would take it, why not? Okay, I'll be first in the line. But at the same time, would you keep your money in that bank? But I wouldn't. So, but I leave you, I, I leave you the, the, you know, the decision up to, whoever was asking the question. But what would you say, what's the main benefit of using using tracking platform? The main benefit? Oh, benefit. well, it's like, you know, you can, uh, it's like, you know, shooting with, that, with your, shooting blindfolded, I would say. You are wasting the money on the ammunition you have, um, and you are trying to shoot some targets. At the same time, you are no, you have no idea where you are shooting to, right? So, you know, having a, like a mission control of your stuff in a tracking tool, it's, it's, it's essential. It's, it's something you must have, otherwise you are not thinking about it, uh, about affiliate marketing, about media buying, uh, you know, properly or, or seriously. And I guess the last question is kind of for both of us in terms of that, uh, are we planning to having uh, integration with AdGash and the volume with the uh, optimizer as well? Uh, yeah, so in terms of Automizer, yes, we've launched it. Uh, we wanted to launch it with a few partners, uh, which are we, we are integrated right now. We were doing the internal uh, surveys about that. Uh, but yes, we will be adding more sources. And yes, the AdCash will be there uh, and many more to come. So feel free to reach out to us with the, with the suggestions. But uh, Without you know, without going into the list, yes, we will be adding new sources, and AdCash will be there very soon. Yeah, um, we are we're already kind of working on it together. So, but thank you so much, Arthur, for for everything uh, today, and uh, thank you all for all the speakers that we had today. Um, we have got some great insights. I th I'm sure that everyone feels that now they can they can take the the advice that was given by everyone and uh, just trying to see how they can make this uh, profitable for their business. So we thank you all. And um, if you have any questions to, to our team or to any of the speakers, please just um, reach out to us and uh, we'll make sure that we will answer and get back to you as soon as possible. Also, the offers that Evgeny was mentioning and also the volumes offer, we will be sending out an email to all of you. So you will have all the links and everything, how you can get the, get get the offers and benefit from them so you will you will get that as well and also the slides of the presentation and we really hope that it was it was something something useful for you and you will be participating in our upcoming series as well and um, stay tuned we will find out more details soon about the next events and who's going to be our next speakers but thank you so much everyone and i hope you have a nice evening a nice day or nice morning wherever you are in the world so thank you Stay safe. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.